That's the rules. Well, my name is Adam Jackson, and after today, I am an international speaker. <laughs> yes. It is truly an honour to have been asked to be the best man at such a hugely significant day. Uh, you would have thought that on this day of all days, Dave would have been the best man. But no, I am the best man. <laughs> Dave's not even second, because Ben's pretty great. <laughs> It's customary to thank various members of the party, and I think this has been done, and uh, will no doubt be done again. Uh, but this wedding has been such a marvel to behold, such levels of creativity from a community, and is a testament to how much you all love Dave and Megan. And uh, not to mention, I haven't written this down, but I, it occurred to me last night just how many air miles have been done, and uh, yeah, I don't know if everyone would fly see me that, that many people go that far because even you Canadians I bet some of you have, don't, don't just live in Nanton <laughs> so I would like to take the opportunity to thank everyone who's worked so hard in putting this together actually especially Mary Jane and Tom who have just been Uh, and did you know that actually all of the wooden things you see, except the trees, have actually been made <laughs> by Mary Jane and Tom? Sorry? She made the trees, yeah. They're plastic leaves. And, uh, yeah. And of course, before I start, doesn't Megan look incredible? Yeah. heavens, as we say in England. <laughs> I, actually, I, generally, I generally thought, shouldn't she be like a bridal model? Because yeah. you, you rock a wedding dress. <laughs> As she was coming up the aisle, I said to Dave, good call. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, it's very important that you know I'm from England. <laughs> it's a tradition in my culture that the best man's speech is an opportunity to humiliate the groom with skeletons in the closet that he thought he had long since buried. <laughs> During my preparations a few months ago, I literally started taking notes on the 14th of December 2018, uh, 17. During my preparations a few months ago, Dave said that in Canada, the, sp uh, the traditional way of doing a best man speech was more sentimental and uh, honoring. <laughs> yeah. But of course he's gonna say that, isn't he? <laughs> Uh, it's, it's actually very difficult for an Englishman to say nice things about other men. We're afraid that it might build them up too much. Yeah. <laughs> so when you need to say something nice, it's important to offer the pill of admiration wrapped in the ham slice of ridicule. <laughs> for those of you who have cats. <laughs> or children, I suppose. No, not children. No, that's not how you give children. Okay, no. right. <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> I met Dave about 10 years ago when there was rumour that we were going to have a clever intern come to church from Oxford University. Slightly disappointed by this small chap with floppy long hair, Dave and I soon became friends as we shared many geeky interests in common. Those that know Dave will be well aware his most apparent quality is his brilliant intelligence. Once when we were in the office sitting together in silence, I began to sang under my breath something, and within two notes, Dave knew that it was the Allegro Man Troppo by Beethoven. That was right, right? No, the dun dun, dun dun. Yeah, that's it, see what's cross. <laughs> he would often be found in the intern house doing horrifically complicated maths equations for fun. <laughs> and then being unable to communicate his achievement to anyone around him. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get embarrassing stories out, his mother was hopeless, <laughs> saying, that, uh, saying to my satirical description of Dave as the academic chosen one, <laughs> she said it was very apt. <laughs> 
So uh, she did actually send me photocopies of uh, of your um, of your school report from when you were six. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. Which I shall now I shall now quote exactly. This is not hyperbole. But um, when Dave was six years old, one of his teachers wrote, and I quote. David brings a great deal of scientific knowledge to the classroom. His understanding is truly breathtaking. <laughs> this is what a fully grown man said about a six-year-old. <laughs> At the end of Dave's year three report, he was asked the question, what do you need help with? To which Dave wrote, nothing. <laughs> you imbeciles. <laughs> He didn't write that bit. <laughs> Although apparently David used to be known as Mummy's Little Yorkshire Pudding. <laughs> but, however, David wasn't always, always a scientific genius. Once upon a time, he got very sunburned at university. So he wrapped his completely naked self in cling film and then stood in the shower until the water ran out. I presume the water for the whole college. <laughs> Another time he, walk, he wanted to s silently walk through the guest room of our friend Suze, who was sleeping in there without, the light, uh, without using any lights. However, he forgot that on his way in he'd closed the door, so on his way out, in the dark, all that could be heard across the house was a full body slap of, <laughs> of David's small frame against the door. <laughs> And both uh, Suze and Jamie send their, um, their highest regards. Actually, Jamie, who was a friend at university, just sent me a message this morning being like, I don't think I've got anything else to add. It's like, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> and in the midst of all this, though, Dave has kept his humility. He once said to a friend that he shared a house with, Congratulations, Mary. You're the only girl I've lived with who hasn't fallen in love with me. <laughs> the worst thing is it's true. But joking aside, Dave is a very important friend to me. God has blessed him with such a gift of wisdom that so many of us here had have, have had times when he's spoken such clarity and life into difficult situations. Amen. And uh, the whole thing about waiting three weeks, I'm like, I do that. And I realise it's because you said one time, don't just buy things on Amazon on a whim. <laughs> called John Watson it. <laughs> Dave is a man of insatiable righteousness and uncompromising honour, a pursuer of truth, and there are few people I would travel halfway across the world to serve on this cosmically significant day. It's because I know that I will say one day, yes, of course I know him, I was his best man, and I didn't want to miss that opportunity to boast of this honour for anything. So two amazing people who have a sold-out heart for Jesus have come together to share a journey in which they will no doubt impact the lives of thousands that God has drawn them together to fulfill a plan and a purpose that can only be fulfilled when they are together as one. For this journey, he has been building them up individually, and so it might sound foolish to some to hear, but Dave and Megan start this journey off knowing that each one of them loves someone more than each other. And that is what will sustain this marriage for a lifetime. So before we raise a toast to this couple, Ben, can I have my glass? Oh, hang on. We need water. Okay, yeah. They need to buy some time. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, an appropriate joke. No, 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 not the Disneyland one, no, okay. No. Yes, the Disneyland one. No, not the yes, yes. <laughs> Thanks, John, buddy. I'm here for you. You know the ginger. that. <laughs> Tell you a story, actually, of what, no. No, not that one, either. Come and ask me about ginger breast milk afterwards. Oh, yes. <laughs> we know that one. <laughs> so before we raise a toast to this couple, Thank I want to offer much. you both my blessing. That God would bless your relationship, that you would be forever growing together. That he would bless your household. <coughs> that he would bless your household, that it would be a refuge of peace for outsiders. That he would bless your finances to abundance. That he would bless your sex, li sex life, that you would be uncontactable at weekends. Except at church. <laughs> That you would be blessed with many children and grandchildren, both physically and spiritually. As for us, I don't want our friendship to be one that happens across continents. No doubt, one day I will have the honour of working with you both. 
Seven years ago, I felt that God said, one day you are going to work with Dave, to which I replied, my father, if this is possible, let this cup of suffering pass from me. <laughs> a few days later, both Dave and I received an email, un unbeknownst of that fact, from a mutual friend, Bill, uh, who said he'd had a dream where I was preaching from the front and it really touched someone and then Dave came and led them to the Lord's and this was a significant confirmation. I actually found that email, you should read it, it's really like... <laughs> and now I believe with the words of a song that David's sister wrote for him a number of years ago. David Blaine, David Blaine, the Mathma Christian with a golden mane. <laughs> Please raise your glasses to Mr. David Blaine, my brother in Christ and my good friend. Who's our? David Blaine. Cheers. Bazaar. And if you'll be seated. And now to Hannah with the weather. <laughs> Today we had rain, 